Go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stones Go Moon podcast. My guest today, friend of the show, best-selling author of the book, The Tao of Trading, Simon Reed. Simon, welcome to the pod. Thank you, Rocco. Great to be back. How are you, mate? I'm good, suffering from a bit of man flu, as I'm no, sure as anyone, <laughs> as anyone with small children will know. But let's get stuck right in it. Simon is the pivot in the room with us now. Oh, or the third. <laughs> You know these these pivot monkeys have, have just become you know really irritating. It's it's th- th- there have been a large number of self proclaimed you know macro experts telling us to expect to pivot pretty much all year, and I don't know what what it is. These people like either they're not listening to the Fed or they just think they know better, or, or they're just time. only listening to things that they want to hear. It's the third time that I used that meme. Is the pivot in the room with us now? And my statement this morning yeah. was, I'm afraid that. Just because you say something for a very long time and eventually it happens, you're going to have people turn around and say, see, I told you so. And that makes me an expert. And these people have massive followings, right? These are not your, yeah. these are the Kramers and these type of people. Uh, evidently, Kramer posted a picture about nine hours ago for the Philadelphia Phillies, like with a thumbs up. And the Houston Astros right. just trashed them. And I'm talking like a... <laughs> Pitched a no heater. So <laughs> Kramer's um, powers. He's got ex- the touch. He, it, it extends beyond the stock market into commodities and even sports now. So, <laughs> so it's it's. <laughs> but I mean, the, the 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 Fed has pivoted in a sense from hawkish to being more hawkish. So, would you like to break us down? Break for us uh, down what happened um, yesterday with Jerome Powell's speech. Well, the S&P 500 opened, it was down a little bit. And then within seconds of the release of the minutes, the, the S&P was up, what, over 1%, nearly 1.5%. Mm. And the, the minutes were taken as being slightly dovish because they, they appeared to open the door to a 50 basis point hike in, in yes. December. Yes. And then Powell started talking and within seconds, the, you know, the S&P started selling off and it lost, what, about 3.3%, 3.4% in the last 90 minutes. It was the worst last 90 minute sell-off on a Fed day ever. And Powell, I mean, I've written it down here. I mean, he, he said uh, level of rates we've estimated in September, the data coming in suggests it's going to be higher. And that's been the pattern, all right? So he's talking mm-hmm. about a higher terminal rate. 5% was the figure that the market's been pricing. Uh, And he's clearly telling the market, no, no, it's it's going to be higher than that. Uh, He also said um, it's it's premature to discuss pausing. It's not something we're thinking about. It's really not a conversation point to be had now. We have a ways to go. All right. So even if we do get a reduction in the velocity of rate hikes, it looks like we're going to be higher and Mm -hmm. potentially higher for longer. All right, so Powell is keen to make this distinction between the pace of hikes mm-hmm. and the terminal rate, which yes. I think uh, the market had perhaps been a little bit oblivious to. And I mean, all of this talk of a pivot, I mean, if, if the Fed goes from 75 to 50, that, that's not a pivot. A mm. pivot is when Powell comes into the, the press conference, says, you know what, inflation is no longer our top priority. Our top priority is the weakness in the US economy, and we're going to do what we can to reignite growth. That is a pivot. Yeah. Uh, if the Fed just starts cut and raising at 50, mm-hmm. you know, that's not a pivot at all. It's just them ca- carrying on a plan that they'd already articulated. He also said something interesting about the, 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 the path to a soft landing is narrowing, which is, I think it's interesting that he's sort of starting to push that narrative. Okay, cool. We said soft landing. Uh, this might not be the case because if you follow his speeches, you always come out and say something, and then subsequently you sort of start to downplay it. Start to, uh, because he can't come outright and say what he wants to say, right? Well, he can't. He's not allowed to stand up there and say that we're, we're going to break mm. things. Yes. All right. Which is, if you're reading in between the lines, he's, they're clearly prepared to do that, and and that's yes. really the only tool they've got at their disposal is is to. Uh, 
cause a recession, cause higher unemployment, reduce demand. Which was what was interesting for me, though, was that the long term bonds of the bond market, the yields didn't really change while the stock market had sort of a massive negative reaction. Do you read yeah. something into that? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at um, look at the performance of the S&P and particularly the Dow since the October 13 low, very strong bounces. I mean, the, the, mm. the Dow had its best month since 1975, its 10th best month ever. Yes. Um, the S&P had a pretty solid month as well. Bonds didn't really recover. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they kind of picked themselves up a little bit, but the, the, the rally in bonds was far less impressive. And I, I really think going into FOMC, equities had priced 75 bips and a dovish outlook. Bonds had priced 75 bips and a hawkish outlook. Mm. They, they were both pricing different outcomes. Surprise, surprise, bond market seems to have got it right. Mm. As it usually does, right? Against equities, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I know we are not political analysts, but there is sort of the talks now that the midterms, the US political midterms, are overshadowing all the macroeconomics on the markets and everything. Do you kind of buy into that or is it something that you ignore? I ignore it. In fact, I think it's a sideshow. I mean, politics can have a you know, a very short term impact, but but really and truly, um, it, it doesn't really move the needle that much. Um, yeah. You know, there yeah. is this theory that markets like gridlock, uh, that, that it, you know, the, the more gridlock, the better, because governments can't stuff things up. And look, I, I kind of buy into that to a certain extent. So if we, if we do see political gridlock post the midterms, uh, we, we, the market could get a, a little bit more of a bid. But honestly, I, I think there are there are bigger bigger issues at hand at the moment. And then the differentiation between um, the Dow and uh, the Nasdaq um, was that indeed a tech was a, a rotation of sorts out of tech into your more your like consumer staples, I guess. Yeah, I think so. I mean, tech tech still looks expensive, right? It and does. And did you see Roku got absolutely slammed, right? It missed, yeah, and it got absolutely slammed. Once you see tech stocks reacting that way, you kind of like, oh, okay, this is still this is still a theme. The same thing happened with Meta, right? I mean, yeah. Meta was down over sixty percent year to date, announced earnings down another twenty percent. So, uh, you know, it's it's not in the price until it's in the price. Um, so, tech still doesn't look cheap, whereas, you know, things like energy probably still does look cheap, and mm-hmm. oil has, has probably got a a bit of an SPR put under it now. You know, if, mm-hmm. if Biden's going to try and refill the SPR, you, you'd think that that's probably puts a bit of a put under the oil price. Um, Sorry, what on. does that mean in layman's terms, the SPR? What does that sort of for people that might not know what that means? Well, so six months ago, Biden started releasing oil from the strate- or pet- petroleum from the Strategic petro- Petroleum Reserve. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you could argue this was a fairly cynical political stunt to try and reduce gas prices into the midterms. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, I, I don't think that... Um, reducing gas prices into a, an election is, is was, was what the SPR was set up for. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there is an argument to be made there. But they need to refill it, okay? It's, it's down to sort of 50% capacity now, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. And um, as and when they refill it, you'd, you'd think that that would put a somewhat of a, a floor under the price of oil. Okay. Because the market knows that there's a yeah. big buyer there. So there's an interesting development that we need to watch out for there. We talked about that pattern or where the stocks popped and then sold off. And I had a conversation with someone this week. Um, it's something that you were very vocal about. Um, if anyone followed your um, content uh, this year, they would have been pretty much uh, spot on in terms of the bounce, right? Right before FOMC, cut your positions into FOMC, Possible short on the minutes, possible fade of that move right after. We'll see if it's again. There's a definite <laughs> pattern here, right? There's a. I mean, for this is now the third time that we've gone through that exact same sequence, and still there are people yeah. that want to almost impart their own will or their own ideas on the market as this. What I think must happen. 
Yeah, and you know, imparting you're trying to impart your will on the market. It's uh, it's it's a game with very little edge. Yes. Um, and, and but what's what we're seeing, right? Earnings earnings announcements are always a binary event risk. But but yeah. what we're seeing now is CPI prints, um, jobs number prints, FOMC meetings, even even the release of the minutes. Uh, yeah. These have become major binary event risks for the market as a whole, and having. A lot of positioning into any one of these, I think, is uh, is fraught with danger. So I, I am aggressively paring back my exposure ahead of any one of these events these days. Do you remember when Donald Trump was a binary event? Oh, you'd, you'd have all of the uh, all all of the trade war news that come out over the weekend, and you 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 know you you come in Monday morning and <laughs> S and P futures would be gap down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some of the sideshow that I'm watching is with Elon and Twitter and the reinstatement of accounts that were banned. If Trump, if there's any inclination of Trump going coming back, I don't know what type of power he still yields, but it is going to be interesting. Talking about social media, uh, would you mind ask, uh, answering um, a few questions from LinkedIn? Yeah, sure. And LinkedIn being a place where these days we seemingly get selfies, I thought this was pretty, pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to read it. I'm going oh, it out. Going to go and uh, add it verbatim because I want to get do justice to it. So um, the question sure. started with a statement. It said more and more people think the Fed had some positive surprises this week in form of slower rate increases and 2023, uh, 2023 rate cuts, right? So that was sort of the thoughts, right, that preceded the FOMC. So he had two personal questions. The first one is how far would the Fed go with their rate increases? Well... More than five percent. Now, certainly, if if you look at um, what Fed funds futures were pricing yesterday, five percent was the consensus terminal rate, but that that will be repriced upwards. Um, mm. Now, we've got a very very small sample size, all right, mm -hmm. but uh, we we know from a very small sample size that historically, inflation once it gets above five percent, it hasn't come back down until the Fed funds rate exceeds the rate of inflation. So some people are sort of looking for that crossover to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Fed Fed's funds rate is going to get up to 8%. I think inflation probably will start to moderate at some point. It's not, mm -hmm. Inflation isn't going to rise forever. Um, but yeah, I, I would think um, somewhere north of five, and it's probably going to be data dependent. Okay. That's a, that's a good question. Anyways, oh, then good answer, sorry. Um, the second one is a, he acknowledges it's very speculative speculative but i thought it was a fun question um he says is qt continue to running i said is qt going to continue to run i guess is what he was trying to say and is it possible the fed doesn't increase interest rates anymore and switch to a balance sheet monetary policy which means faster roll off and possible outright sales i would say no uh, with, with a pretty high degree of confidence because the Fed have clearly wanted to make um, the Fed funds rate the primary policy tool. Um, the communication has all been about rate hikes, the pace of breaks, terminal, dot plot. Um, there's really been very little communication about the balance sheet, okay? And that's because nobody really knows what impact QT is going to have, right? We, we just don't have really any experience with it. So we, we really don't know what impact if any it's going to have on tightening financial conditions so I, I think i think that's an extremely low probability i completely agree with you simon thank you so much for joining me today before i let you leave um there's a question that i want to pose to you and it's sort of outside of the field i guess of of trading but still has to do with trading it's this year end close where i'm seeing a lot of traders you and in, yourself included saying that hey i've had a good year maybe not everyone had a a great year like we had in the past it's time to roll back positions don't do anything drastic there's no reason to risk capital now Th that's correct right before i go on that that's that that is that that is certainly a valid point of view yeah okay if, if you if you're having a bad year it's unlikely you're going to make it up now yes so my question is yeah. as a trader what do you do in this time until Christmas, until New Year, how do you occupy yourself? Like, what 
because the uh, there will always be this urge to partake in the market, I guess, because as moves come and go. But w- what do you mm-hmm. do outside of of trading in in this time? Well, I mean, I, I I will trade right the way up until kind of the Christmas break. Um, I, I've got no intention of kind of putting my feet up at this stage. Mm-hmm. I, I'm having a I'm having a decent year. No, nothing like last year, but but it, it's still a, a decent year. So it puts food on the table. Okay. Um, but in terms of other things to do, I mean, it's you know, young family trying to keep fit, moving house, all, all those sorts of fun things. And what would your advice be for someone else, like looking from taking all your experiences of the past and maybe for people, someone that's just like had his second year or third year in the market going in this time and he might not have that calmness and composure that you have to trade up until the time maybe he makes a big mistake now like for goes risk management and stuff like that and you know makes a big mistake what would that advice be for a person what, what what does he need to go and do now uh just just take take a few deep breaths and never never revenge trade never try and make back losing trades just stick to your plan i mean mm. risk management is it and what yes. what i say to people who are aspiring traders is don't even don't even think of yourself as a trader don't even talk about yourself as being a trader in, in all of your self talk mm. uh, and the way you describe yourself and think of yourself think of yourself as a risk manager mm. and and when you when you're assessing trades to take don't have your traders head on have your risk managers head on that's excellent. Uh, that is crucial because that, that is what will keep you in the game long term. Excellent advice. Simon, thank you so much for joining me today. If the listeners want to connect with you and find out more about what it is that you are doing, where can they do that? Uh, they can find me at uh, on Twitter at, uh, at Simon underscore Ree, uh, on LinkedIn at Simon Ree, and my website is www.towertrading.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon Ree. Thank you so much for joining us and to our listeners, peace, love and prosperity. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.